pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to our... Is it on? Yeah. All right. So, welcome to our June 20th Children's School Committee meeting. Is anyone uh, signed yes. up for open forum? Ellie Byrne. Uh, okay. So, anyone who'd like to speak, please uh, identify yourself. And again, you are limited to uh, three to five minutes, and I will let you know when you have one minute left. Okay. Thank you. Your mic on? Yeah, push it. Push the button. There you Thanks. go. Now it is. There you go. Okay, thank you. Again, I'm Ellie Byrne. I've lived in this town pretty much all my life. Yes, I work here in the library in the high school. Yes, I am a member of Council 94, but I am not here to discuss that. It's more like I'm here as a taxpayer. Or whatnot. Okay. My concern is the number of students in the school who we, in essence, okay, okay let me start again, okay, because okay. I'm really. Okay, take your time. Okay, this graduating class that we had, when the this, when this kids came in, there were 128 students that came in in October that were listed. At the end of the school year, there was 122 that were listed as seniors, 110 of them graduated. There's seven percent of the students that what happened to them. Okay, they didn't graduate. I'm concerned about the blue collar student. That's what I call him. The kid who doesn't learn from a book. The kid that doesn't learn from seeing. He's the hands-on kid. Okay. He's the kid who struggles to take an honors course, struggles to take a prep course, because that's not what they feel that they're going to go into. They are not the college kids. And one thing I'd like to know is the kids that graduate this year, all those kids that go off to college, I want to know what percent of them make it through two years of college. What's the turnover? If we have 90% of our kids go to college from Tiverton, after two years, how many of that 90% are still in college? And what have we done for those kids who don't go to college? There are trades out there that these kids need math skills in. They need reading comprehension skills in. Um, the occupation that my husband is in, they give a math test for the kids to go into their trade, into his trade school. It's a sixth grade math test. We had seven or eight kids from Tiverton apply for it, two kids pass the math test. It's a basic math test. We're, not have, we're forcing the kids to take honors algebra, honors geometry, and when I, we need to give these kids basic math. How to, how to balance a check, personal finance, how to b balance a checkbook. I'm gonna go buy a car. What's the right percentage rate? I'm gonna, I wanna get a bank account. What's, you know, who's got the best interest rate for me? Do I know how to measure a board? Oh, okay. things like that. And I feel the kids that aren't going, we're not giving this opportunity. How many of the kids are going to go on? They read Shakespeare. I don't have to read Shakespeare. What's Shakespeare going to do to a kid who, how is he going to help a kid who builds things with his hands? Because that's his talent. He can see it in his head and he can build it with his hands. But if you give him a book, he'll go, I can read part of it, but I can't read all of it. We need to let our kids know how to read a manual. So when they have to put something together, they know how to read a manual to put the computer parts together or to fill out a job application or to do a resume. We're not, I feel we're not helping our kids in that way. This school once had several programs. 
they had a metal program they had a child development program which i know now portsmouth has one fifteen thousand dollars for a student to go there we had automotive with today's cars kid boys love to tinker with their cars but the automotive let them tinker with their cars i mean that would keep their interest here in the schools so they're not off off doing something else we have a wonderful boat building project program the kids love it it's a beautiful kayak that they make but we need programs like that sewing how many of you children know how to sew on a button repair a tear in their clothes or is it just throw it in the trash and just go buy another pair of shorts if you can just put them on one leg okay yep um now those are just the things i feel we need to to programs we need to give our kids so that they can go on whether they decide they do a year of college or not and it's not for them or they like working with their hands or building stuff we need to give our kids the opportunity in the technology career programs that, and we can't just gear our scheduling for the high honor kids the ap kids we've got to also look at well the kid that's going to create something from junk signed up for open forum uh, can I have an approval or a motion to approve the consent agenda and minutes so moved Second. all those in favor mr. Rurick yes we have uh, quite a number of uh, appointments tonight uh, so I'll try to go through them as quickly as I can uh, first uh, maternity leave for Barton Elaine Del Deo uh, appointments uh, to fifth physics teacher High School Richard Bernardo up Tiverton High School stipend positions class of 2018 advisor Leanne Byrne Burns class of 2019 uh, advisor Jim Gouch class of 2020 advisor Joanne Malloy school chorus Michael Daniels <coughs> excuse me school band director Dan Snizek William Haggis Jazz Ensemble Director, Dan Snizek, William Haggis. Drumline Instructor, it should be just, it's not there, it was a misprint, it's William Haggis. Community Service Coordinator, Matt McGuire. Contact Teacher at the High School, Matt McGuire. Dance and Color Guard Team Coach, Brittany Paquette. Student Fund Treasurer, Dorothea Eckersley. Senior Project Coordinator, Leanne McCarthy. Language and Writing SAT Tutor, Leanne McCarthy. Math team coach Nancy Carrero, math SAT class uh, Nancy Carrero, yearbook advisor Diane Labreck, National Honor Society Nikki Arujo, Rhode Island Honor Society Nikki Arujo, newspaper advisors Sarah Gray and John Devolve, uh, response to intervention RTI Lee Cusimano, drama advisor Gloria Christ. Tiverton High School athletic department stipend and positions head football coach Robert Murray. Uh, assistant head f uh, football coach Andy Gaychuk, assistant head football coach Bill Phillips, assistant head football coach Bill McGrady, as uh, assistant head football coach Jorge Pessoa, head cross country coach Brad Botvin, head boy soccer coach Tom Murray, assistant boy soccer coach Christopher Carrero, <coughs> excuse me, head girl soccer coach Joe Dutra, assistant girl soccer coach Jeffrey Nagel. Head girls volleyball coach Carrie Russo, assistant girls field hockey coach Christine Messenger, head girls tennis coach Lauren Marsh Bush, head cheering coach Sue McDermott, assisting uh, assistant cheering coach Kristen McDermott, head boys basketball coach Dave Landock, assistant boys basketball coach Brian Cleary, assistant boys basketball coach Robert Murray, head girls basketball coach Jeanette Lopes. Assistant girls basketball coach Kara Faria, head baseball coach Robert Murray, assistant baseball coach 
Jorge Pessoa, head softball coach Josh Mello, head boys lacrosse coach Shane Parker, head girls lacrosse coach Rachel Mata, head, head golf coach Adam Tracy, head boys tennis coach Bill Phillips. <coughs> Tiverton Middle School, stipend position, after school band director Mike Alves, athletic director Steve Schreiner, cross country coach Steve Schreiner, unified basketball coach Steve Schreiner, Community Service Coordinator Luann Pauls, Newspaper Advisor Luann Pauls, ELA Coordinator Shelly Nagara, Head Girls Basketball Coach Rachel Mata, Homework Club Supervisor Deborah O'Hara, Math Coordinator slash Coach Kristen Destrimps, Contact Teacher Sherry Alves, Science Coordinator slash Coach Maria Clary, Student uh, Social Studies Coordinator Christine Costa, Summer Band Director Mike Alves, Boys basketball coach Michael Brigham and guidance counts, uh, guidance coordinator Shana Roper and Kate Brennan. Picasset stipended positions, contact teacher Carl Reed, response to intervention Sue Cardoza, string orchestra director Renee Bond, Ranger Elementary stipended positions, response to intervention Sue Petraca, string orchestra director Renee Bond, and uh, at Fort Barton, uh, response to intervention, Christine Krause and Beth Kilborn, and string orchestra director, uh, Renee Bond. And that is all the appointments. Thank you, that was uh, soldierly work. Correspondence? I don't believe we have any. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to move up item 9C. All those in favor? Mr. DeQuatro. Hello, everyone. Just want to give you an update, uh, building committee-wise. We had met uh, a couple weeks ago to discuss um, the selection of pre-qualifications. If you remember, the last time I met with everyone, we were going, going to go out with pre-qualifications of contractors for the project. We did so, four people replied. Uh, one company we decided to drop out. They weren't, as we put it, qualified to do a, a, as expansive a roof job as we proposed. Uh, they were more of an environmental or efficiency type company. They weren't a general contractor that covered and self-performed their own services. So of that four list, we dropped one out and we selected uh, Allborg, Gilbane, and Berman as the three qualified contractors that would be able to be bid on the project. So our next steps is um, to send the drawings out probably by the end of next week for bid for those contractors to have three to four weeks. Two weeks into that bidding, we take a tour of the schools to show them the conditions if they have any questions that we can reply to for an addenda that comes out during the bidding time. And then at the end of four weeks, there'll be a selected contractor that we then sit down, interview, go over the scope of work so everyone's on the same page, make sure they have everything included in their price, and then we come back to this committee after the building committee and we, we uh, recommend an award for that project to begin. So this is the update of where we are, if anyone has any questions. So I'm asking the committee to approve us sending out the documents to the three companies that the building committee, uh, along with uh, RGB, uh, vetted already. Which they will then uh seek you know they will then bid on can i have a motion to approve i make a motion second okay any discussion okay we have a general contractor and an architect on the building committee i might point out and they were in favor of this plan as well so mm -hmm. take a vote all those in favor opposed thank you okay thanks thank Dave. You. okay all right do we need to move up do you want to move up 90 too Bill? Uh, hold on one second. Uh, we're not doing L because uh, yeah, the, uh, there's gonna a conflict. Be, uh, we're going to table that to our next yep. meeting. Yeah, continue it. Yeah. Um, we can do, why don't we do D while Dave's here? Okay. <coughs> um, it's a request to, to go out of. Can I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, this, re this is a request also we discussed at our last building committee meeting uh, to seek permission to go out to bid uh, for a firm to uh, do any asbestos removal that may be associated with the renovations. 
uh, either at the high school or at the middle school. Dave, do you want to, is, is that pretty much it as far as that goes? We use the state's MPA list. What the MPA is a master price agreement list that the state of Rhode Island has that qualified firms can go there and you can solicit off that list of qualified firms to do the job. So that's what we're seeking permission to do to be able to go to the state bid list okay. uh, yeah, the, to find a company. Any for that? Okay, do I have a second? Second. Any discussion or questions? This is sort of a, an intrinsic part of the whole process and so we're kind of moving along. Schedule wise, if we remove all the asbestos, then they can do the work next year without uh, you know interrupting too much. Right. Uh, as soon as the weather breaks, they'll be able to go at the boilers and whatnot. They can pre-order, pre-have the boilers there in time to minimize the, the uh, instruction interference. Okay. And we, of course, also have Mr. Mrs. Levesque on the uh, committee watching carefully. So, Who holds uh, us to our timelines, our yeah. meeting timelines. <laughs> All those in favor? Opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. All right. Can make a motion to continue? Uh, we can do that when we get to it. So um, we are back to old business then. Uh, uh, item number eight, seven. Number seven. seven. School ah. policy. Meal seven, charge. school policy development review, possible approval, second reading. This is regarding the meal charge policy. Right. Uh, if anyone has any comments, this is, uh, again, uh, required uh, by the federal government that every district uh, have one. Um, we haven't made any changes since the first reading, so it's still the same document. I have a motion to approve. Second. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Any discussion? So, um, is this working? No. No. The lights aren't working. Pull it closer to you. Okay, anyway. Um. You sure? Okay, so it's interesting that we, we did, did this policy, and I thank the policy committee for being thoughtful because we just had an experience in our family with this this weekend. I was at a birthday party, and one of my nephews called me to come in the house and chat, and that's never a good thing. So I went in, and he said um, he didn't have a good never? experience at uh, school <coughs> because he ordered the salad and his pizza, which is his favorite, and he got a cold cheese sandwich. And he said, Shani, it wasn't like your cheese sandwiches. It was two pieces of bread and a piece of cold cheese, and I don't know why that happened to me. And I explained to him that it was the, the policy and that we were working on it. And I want to make sure that the, there's notification. Maybe if it's electronic, it would be better because these parents have to know that they, you know, they have to put money in so that that won't happen to the kids because, unfortunately, his friends called him a pauper. And I said, well, that's not a friend then. I said, because if, you, if that was a friend, he would have offered you half of his sandwich. So that's a good life lesson. So I hope the things are automated and we, we get those notices on time. And that'll be good. Yeah, I have two comments. One, that will, happen, that will not happen any longer at the elementary school because our policy allows elementary school children to continue to charge their meals. And the second comment is we're, uh, we always, we always had a process for notifying parents if they had uh, negative balances, and we're re-implementing that a little more vigorously in conjunction okay. with this policy. Okay, because I mean, I'm thinking of all the other kids in the district mm -hmm. that it happens to, and they might not t they might not share with their grandmother the way my kids do, which is wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Take a vote. Any all those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Thank you. So we are on 8A, Old Business at Risk Seniors, final report. Yes, uh, Mr. Ashley uh, and I uh, spoke uh, or have been in numerous conversations. We've had numerous uh, presentations here at the school committee uh, regarding uh, the number of seniors uh, who are struggling and who did not graduate, and I thought it was appropriate that Mr. Ashley give a, a final report uh, to the school committee. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I'd like to first start actually by um, stating my agreement with Ms. Burns um, in that we look to support all students. And as a comprehensive high school um, and district for that matter, um, we recognize that students have varying interests and needs and that we want to do whatever we can 
Um, and I think we can also recognize that um, the, need, the needs are great. Um, that's no excuse, um, but that there's, there's much, uh, I think there's much we've done which I want to talk about and obviously um, we have much, much work to do. Um, and uh, what I'd like to just talk about briefly that I mentioned in my note in the packet um, is that um, you know, starting earlier uh, this school year as we, as I mentioned, as I brought forward to the committee, um, I guess it was in the winter at some point when we had recognized that um, there was a significant cohort of our seniors uh, who were at risk of not graduating. Um, and really what unfolded over the ensuing months um, leading up to uh, last week's graduation was um, challenging, um, but I, I do want to kind of point to, to some highlights um, around some true uh, team, team efforts. Uh, I spoke to the faculty um, yesterday as our last official day, um, and I really gave the credit to all of them in um, the level of communication, commitment, and dedication that they exhibited really as a school community in working with these students and their families um, in conjunction with the supports um, on behalf of central administration and the school committee um, to, to really tackle this and see what we could do um, to support as many of those students as we can. Um, as you'll see, um, we're not happy. When that rate's not 100%, we're never satisfied. If it's one student, if it's 15 or 20 students, it, it's, it's all, um, it's too many. You know? And um, what I tried to describe in the packet though was um, that the teachers working with the students and their families really came together and recognized the urgency of this situation. And I can't just point enough to their efforts. I'm including the main office staff, and for that matter, I'd even give credit to the maintenance staff because we even had some of our maintenance team members pulling seniors aside and saying, "Hey, I heard that you're what's going on, you know, what, what, um, but and that that made a difference um, with the supports um, <coughs> through, like I said, uh, the tutoring supports, the in-school supports, the after-school supports, all together. Um, I believe, and I, I think the school community would vouch for this, did make an impact. Again, we're not satisfied that it's not 100%, and, and we're not satisfied until it's there. Um, but I think one, one takeaway in, in the positive from this is that Tiverton, as a school and as a community, when we recognize the need on behalf of our students, we take action and we address it, and we believe that all students can achieve. In some cases, like I said, in those, in those few students that didn't make it, um, we're still not giving up. We're still having meetings this week, last week, with those families to say, what's, what's our next steps? Where are we with the classes? Is it summer school? Is it a different kind of program? Um, and so we're hoping that uh, of the seniors that didn't graduate um, do have plans to kind of a delayed graduation or summer graduation, as we call it, for early August. Um, it won't be all of them that didn't graduate, unfortunately, but again, um, a significant portion, we believe, will be on track to get that summer graduation. Again, it's, it's not enough. It's, it's never enough. Um, but that, um, like I said, that, that positive takeaway of the, the school community coming together. Um, at the same time, we recognize that um, we have work to do. Um, it should obviously, uh, should never even gotten to the point that it did. Um, and so right away, we've already started talking about our, um, the systems that we have in place to first identify, and then the supports that we have, and the systems we can use to immediately try to provide those supports as soon as we identify those struggling learners. And that's not just for seniors, obviously. That goes for the whole school, you know, nine to 12. Um, and it's always a challenge when we wish we had X and Y resources, and. Um, some of the work that's come out of this in terms of uh, the attendance committee, um, looking at um, you know, how do we get students to just get to school, and then at the same time, um, mental health and supporting some of those students that um, have more serious challenges um, so that when we do identify them, provide those supports. So uh, again, uh, much gratitude to the entire high school team, but uh, much work ahead of us as well. I'd just like also to uh, add uh, to what Chris said is that <clears throat> next year, Chris and I have talked, and I don't think he's 
uh, worked it out with his <clears throat> guidance counselors yet. But what we want to do, I recommend, I have recommended that we identify the remaining students who are were classified as level threes, and that would be the junior and uh, senior class, and be able to track them right from the get-go. So by the end of the first quarter, we will be able to identify much sooner because historically we always used to wait to the end of the second quarter. But what this year has taught us is that we don't want to wait that long. So by the end of the first quarter, we will uh, identify those students that are at risk, both juniors and uh, all kids will be identified, but the focus will be on the juniors and seniors um, because they're the most immediate towards graduation. And I think that that will help alleviate some of the numbers that we saw this year. Um, plus, we'll also be doing some uh, professional development training uh, in August for our staff at the high school on uh, differentiated instructional strategies that they can help uh, uh, impl implement during the course of this school year. So, yeah. so wanted to add that. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, um, just so I would venture to guess, uh, you know, maybe based on my own experience in high school, not that I was at risk of not graduating, but that the end of the first quarter is a quarter later than you probably actually have the information. Uh, my guess is you know which students are at risk on the first day of school based on the last 11 years. Isn't that a valid or a supposition? Well, you don't want to, you, you don't, what, you assume all kids are going to, yes, you do know kids that are at risk, but they're at risk for different reasons. What yeah. we're going to be, what guidance has to do, though, is identify, they already know who those kids are, but then you have academic at-risk students, and sometimes they come together all the time, you know, they, one impacts the other. Um, but the first quarter is where you have, obviously, when you have kids that are at-risk, at interventions are going to occur right away, starting mm -hmm. in September, depending okay. on the student. I said the first quarter because that's when you have tangible evidence. Well, I suppose they've declared themselves at that point for their senior year, but it seems to me like they've. But you also would be looking at your junior. You'd also be looking at their junior years, the junior yeah. and sophomore senior years, because we were running into that level three cohort that was having trouble adjusting to the the higher standards that they were being exposed to. Uh huh. But yes, they, to answer your question, guidance does know who are students are and they're at risk for different reasons sometimes academic other times social emotional okay yep thank you, Mr. Ashley. And, um, and I'd like to thank the staff from the custodians on up because we are a family here and I know how hard you work every year to help every one of these students and thank you again and when they do have that graduation at Somerset High School, if you can let the school committee know because it's a wonderful yes. ceremony. Yes. And also, if there's ones that come in, I'd love to give the diplomas as I do because it, sometimes those are the ones that work the hardest. Uh, yeah. We want to make it special when Agreed. they do get it. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I guess I would be looking for a report earlier than, than, so, than later uh, than, than we got this year. Um, and, and maybe, I don't know what the date is, but maybe you can come back, with, back to us and say, you know, this is when I want to target knowing or taking the temperature of where things are mm. and uh, letting us know what other resources you may need mm. at that point to, to make sure that everybody succeeds who can. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, to sp and to speak to your question briefly, we, we are doing that work in terms of knowing which students are at risk right now in terms of our current 9th to 11th graders and even the uh, current 8th graders. Um, mm -hmm. That's where our counselors right now are doing a lot of work in their student schedules in terms of looking at the types of classes and whether or not certain supports are built into their schedules right from the beginning of the year to uh, address that concern. And, and along those lines, uh, Chris and I were planning in at our July meeting to talk about the different initiatives that the high school will be working on next year. And one of the things that we are going to be presenting or we're planning to talk about is, and I've heard it quite a bit in my meetings, especially with the guidance staff, is the social emotional piece. And I heard it during mm -hmm. my walkabouts with all my, at all levels, is how can we help the kids that have such social emotional issues that if you can't get that taken care of, the education doesn't right. occur. Yeah, yeah. And what kind of resources do we need? And the, I know for the high school, because uh, I've done most of my meetings with them, 
they're in the process of looking at that and hope to be making recommendations to the committee, as you, as you mentioned, looking for resources. Um, and there will be resources that they'll need in order to address it. Okay. And, I, and again, what, what they are and how they can be addressed is obviously be open for discussion. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? I would just like to thank <clears throat> Mr. Ashley, guidance department, the faculty, and the support staff for really coming together to, to try to do your best to work through this. I'm not going to consider it a crisis, but it, it wasn't it was a, a normal situation. And I, I did see you all come together and do your very best. And I'm also, you know, applauding you for continuing to follow with these students. You know, just because June 9th has passed doesn't mean we're giving up on them. Correct. So thank you. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, item 8B, Tiverton Prevention Coalition Survey. Yes, at, at our last meeting, per uh, uh, the request of the committee, I met with the principals. Uh, we talked about the questions, the questions four, four five, and six. Um, after a long discussion, uh, we have concluded uh, that questions uh, five should be eliminated from the survey. Four yeah. and six, uh, especially since it's going to the high school and the middle school, both Chris and Lori, and as were the other principals and myself, um, all in agreement on the uh, four and six should stay, but the five, the consensus was it should be eliminated if, if it could be. Ms. Zella? My request to the committee, um, should it be your decision to follow that recommendation, is to um, put it put a, in writing that you sorry, that put it in writing that you would approve the administration of the survey with the elimination of whatever particular questions you choose to eliminate. I just had the same conversation with another school committee who were asking um, sort of the same to remove the same question, and there they asked for my sort of suggestion on how to go about that, how to communicate that to the state, <coughs> and I think simply. Um, notification to the state that you would otherwise approve the survey with the elimination of that particular question. Um, I think it sends a strong message. It's clear. Um, it's not an unwillingness to participate in the data collection or anything else. It's simply um, looking at a question that we find objectionable and not allowing that to be put in front of our students. Just out of curiosity, the other committee was okay with four and six? Yes. Well, it, it's a middle school. It was Little Compton, so it's a middle school. So they we know them just seventh and eighth graders. They said, "Well, you know, isn't that a challenging question to ask for seventh and eighth graders?" My response, um, you know, I gave a very blasé response to the questions, but um, you know, for some seventh and eighth graders, they know for sure what's going on for them. Some eleventh and twelfth graders don't, and they find out through their college experience. So it really depends on. The, mm -hmm. the child, the individual child, in their development and their self awareness. Um, so, but I think that was the question uh, that they were most concerned about was number five. Is it five? Number five. Um, and I am very comfortable advocating at the state level for that to be removed. Um, just an FYI, since our last meeting here together, uh, Newport has approved the survey and Portsmouth has approved the survey. Middletown has not had it before their school committee yet, and Jamestown, um, the superintendent has approved it for seventh and eighth grade, but it, it's on their July agenda. Um, Without modification? Little, um, excuse me? Those districts have not modified it? No or? one has modified it, <coughs> with the exception of Little Compton, the request, um, they're gonna make a formal request to modify and eliminate question five. <coughs> and if, they say no. You have to. You have to conclude it. I mean, you don't allow the survey. Standing. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm, I understand that we have that final authority, but will they? Uh, I'm just curious uh, how this potentially could play I out. I have not been in a position before to go back and forth with them about a question yeah. that's on a, on the survey and being asked to be approved. So the same question also came up in Little Compton. What if they say, okay, if you don't ask every question, your funding will be pulled. 
I don't have an answer for that. Um, that is part of the contract that the coalitions have with the state is to um, advocate for and administer the surveys. So that being said, that's our, that's our contract for the coalitions, but we can't give, we don't have the authority to administer a survey without the school department's approval. So that part of it, you know, so it's, you know, it's sort of an odd thing to be held responsible right. for in terms of the coalition. We'll advocate and support and provide um, guidance, leadership, whatever, in the administration of that survey, keep all the pieces moving forward for the approval process, but ultimately, we can't, we don't have the authority to do it without you. Um, I'm, fair, I'm very confident that school committees have a very strong voice in shaping the questions or eliminating a question. Um, after our last meeting, I, the next morning I quickly got on email with uh, BHDDH about the concerns with the questions and they responded and I, they responded with a rationale for the questions which I sent out to the superintendent and then followed up with mm -hmm. um, sending that out to you. There's, they have justification, they have reasons why they think it's important. It wasn't a randomly selected group of questions. But that being said, we also are operating within a culture, within a community, and, have, and have, mm -hmm. you have a responsibility to make sure that you're doing what you think is appropriate for the kids, right. which is what I represented to them. Um, I, don't have, you know, I don't have the authority to tell them to pull the question or else, but the school committees have every <coughs> right and opportunity to say to the state, you know, we are comfortable with everything but this and we're asking you to remove it. Right. And do you get any feedback any, from elsewhere in the state, uh, other um, communities that have, the, you, know, you mentioned so I some, have but. The, I have the list of the approved and not approved. Um, so far there are 10 approved, approved communities there are two that have declined, um, and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's question-oriented. One of the um, communities that declined was Charaho, and they were pretty much determined not to do the survey this year. And uh, again, I don't know why, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's question-related. And the other um, decline is North Providence, and I don't know why that is. Mm -hmm. There are 10 that are outright <coughs> approved, and then there are 22 school districts that are still in the process. Some of them, like Middletown haven't ha and Jamestown, haven't had it before them yet, and others are sort of, I think, going back and forth. I'm not the only, this is not the only district, Little Compton's not the only district that have asked for some time to think about it and more dialogue around right. it. Okay. Principals have anything to add or? Silence. Okay. Anybody else? Don't mean to monopolize. Mrs. Black, Ms. Pavo. I, I think that we go ahead with our intention to ask that we not ask question number five. And if it if it becomes an, a big issue with regard to funding, we can have another discussion about it. But I, uh, as with everyone else, I'm not comfortable with that question and would like us to proceed mm -hmm. with our original intention. Ms. Palish, any? So can I have a motion? I'll make a motion <coughs> that we move forward with accepting the administration of the survey with the exception of question number five okay. uh, and that we put together something in writing. Okay. So your motion is to approve the survey with the exception of question number five and that we send correspondence to right. the um, B, do I B H D D H that uh, we feel that this is not an appropriate question for our students. And we'll ask Mrs. Dolly Roach or Mr. Rurick to draft that correspondence. And we have a second. Any discussion, any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you to the uh, principals for your insight. <clears throat> um, new business, graduation walk video. 
Yes, um, as I mentioned at our last <coughs> meeting, we had our first uh, annual uh, high school graduation walk, uh, which uh, Mrs. Delcourt was uh, able to film for us, and I thought it's not too long, and Julie's promised not to cry. Um, okay. And we, again, we were able to go to all the schools because um, the uh, we were ahead of schedule and we were able to get it uh, get over to Picasset as well because we originally didn't think we were going to be able to make it.
congratulations. That was a phenomenal yeah, job. Yeah, that was terrific, Julie. Thank you for bringing that. And was this, was it Sue Zimmick? Sue Zimmick. I want to thank Sue Zimmick for Absolutely. the recommendation. Yeah. What a fantastic, yeah. fantastic fun idea. I hope that continues for a long time. <clears throat> okay, so um, item 9B, Girls on the Run Program, Ranger. Yes, um, <coughs> asking the school committee uh, to approve the uh, Girls on the Run after school program, which would begin in September. And I've attached the uh, request from the uh, teacher, uh, Ms. Spahn, who's the adaptive physical education teacher, and you have the background as to what the purpose of the program is. Mr. Cabral, any, this is at Ranger, correct? It seems like, a, it seems like an excellent opportunity for the kids. Uh, Mrs. Spahn is, is very enthusiastic about it. Uh, it's not only the, the running aspect of it, it's also the emotional and the other the, the uh, lessons that are involved in the program. Okay, yeah, looked very nice. Okay, can I have a second? Second. Can I just ask yeah, sure. one question? Yeah, sure. um, Mr. Cabral, there's a mention of a $170 fee is that going to be coming from students? Or? That'll come from students, students' families. It, and there's also some scholarships available, but through the program. Through the program itself. Right. Okay, good. So that would be a voluntary contribution, or no? I'm that's not sure. it, it's not a voluntary contribution. If, if, if there's a if, if there's a difficulty, there'll be a procedure that the family will have to to apply for the uh, the waiver. Okay. Is that it's sponsored by a non? I looked up the company. It's a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, company that runs like, it. Do we get into the pay to play? Thing? Not. What is it? It'd be after school, yeah. and if there's scholarships available, I don't think you get into the pay to play. I wouldn't have recommended it if I thought it was a okay issue. So, like, just like for um, some of the art classes, we yes. charge, but we, there's nobody's denied them. Okay. Any other discussion? Questions? No. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay, thank you. Great job. Uh, item we did C and D. Item 9 C. No, 9 E. E, yeah. Uh, House yes. Bill 593 uh, and Senate Bill 50285. Yes, Mrs. Polish requested to have these placed on the agenda, so I'll just turn it to her. I put this on because um, this looks like this is being um, fast-tracked um, right now through the House and the Senate. Um, this committee in the past, with a different makeup, um, has um, opposed this legislation because, uh, for various reasons, um, we just um, we feel that um, it puts the uh, school department at a disadvantage to just have things continue right. with no endpoint. So I just wanted to give this committee an opportunity to um, discuss it and see if um, we wanted to take a position that I would then communicate on your behalf to our reps and senators. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion uh, opposing the legislation? No. Yes. Yes. Because then yes. we can. Yes. It, right. I'll make a motion. Second. Okay, so any discussion? Well, I'll jump in here. I think it does put us at a significant disadvantage and it's really... Yeah, really, uh, it, it, I mean, it's, it's myself and Sally have been on committees where we yeah. felt pretty strongly. So yeah. Diane, Elaine, and Jerry, I really wanted to give you an opportunity yeah, to share I, your thoughts. I, I think it really does put the district at a disadvantage and frankly, who we represent, which is the students and the citizens, at a disadvantage. And so I, I think this is a really bad idea from the point of view of public education. And I, I've, I've heard of it up till now. And from what I've read, I, I would have to agree with you. Um, I understand that there is a strong push for it. But clearly, from the school committee perspective, it, it, it doesn't it won't serve our district well, um, and I would oppose it. Anybody else? OK. 
Okay. All those in favor of sending such communication? And I'm going to, just to make sure, I'm, you're going to communicate through me and I'm going to send an email that we have taken a position and that our position is please oppose it on our behalf. Okay. Right. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for Thank you. bringing that to us. Um, item 9F, approval of bid for exterior security upgrades to Fort Barton, Bocasset, Ranger, and the central office. Mr. Fiore? Yes, thank you. As, we, as the committee's um, previously uh, been made aware, we uh, desire to get a bid for security systems for the front entrance ways for the elementary schools and, uh, and central admin. So we went out to bid a few weeks ago. We had a, bit, a bidder, Dane Tech, come in uh, basically right at where we were anticipating the bid. Uh, we've had, we've uh, had some work done uh, by one of the other by one of our administrators at, a, at another uh, position, and they were satisfied with the work. So, uh, based on uh, the price and the references, uh, we're recommending we approve the uh, security work for the three entrance ways at the elementary schools and admin Dane Tech of Johnston with their bid of fifteen thousand seven hundred seventy-three dollars and forty-seven cents. And that other administrator was the police department, you mean, or? No, no, actually one of our school administrators. One of our school administrators, the, uh, okay. The they did work for the Tiverton Police Department, though, as well. Yes, that's correct. Did we talk to them, or were they satisfied well, with I the quality of the work? Yeah. I think I would before, I mean, I think we can approve this, but I would also like you to ask them since they're. Yeah, I don't think they were very specific on the extent of the work. Uh, it didn't look that extensive, but if they yeah, that's fine. We'll were <laughs> unhappy with it, Absolutely. I would be. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm happy to I'm personally happy to approve it, but I would check with the police department yeah, before we be make it a t tentative approval w without any uh, positive uh, okay. recommendation. I'll make a motion that we approve Dane Tech uh, Inc. of Johnston bid of fifteen seven seven three forty seven for the elementary school and administrative offices security system pending. Uh, satisfactory report back from the police department. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, just one question. I, I see this includes the elementary schools and admin, and I know we've already addressed the high school. Where are we with the middle school? I know there middle were school. We're going to have questions. a request to go out to bid at our July meeting because we just received approval recently from the fire marshal to do the work the at the middle school. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, okay. Good. I'm glad to hear it's moving as well. Okay. Anything else? All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Moving right along. Monthly reports, superintendent report. Yes, uh, awards night uh, was held on May 31st here at the high school where uh, graduating seniors were recognized for their academic accomplishments uh, over the past four years. As you saw in the video, we had our first annual senior walk on June 8th. June 9th, uh, graduation was held here in the uh, gymnasium. State Representative Ms. Uh, Jay Edwards gave the uh, commencement address. Uh, Principal Ashley, uh, class valedictorian Kyle Peckham, and class salutatorian, and I, I apologize for not including their name, uh, also addressed the graduates. Also on June 16th, we had uh, just recently eighth grade promotion night here in the uh, gymnasium as well. Um, as I said before, uh, since my last report, uh, I've held uh, three meetings with Mr. Ashley and the members of the guidance department. We discussed the status of next year's schedule. Uh, again, uh, at the present time, guidance counselors are working on the uh, few remaining conflicts. And next year, we have uh, ramp up classes scheduled for English 9 and 10 and Algebra 1 and Geometry. And the ramp up classes are the extra classes for those students that maybe having difficulty in those classes and we did it with our remaining with our current staff we didn't have to hire anyone so we we're able to provide that so we have one two three four more classes that you were able to fit in in addition yes yes okay okay uh, also uh, I met last week with the high school's attendance committee and reviewed their first draft of uh, a policy uh, or recommendations, I should say, that they will be bringing to the committee probably in the early fall in an effort to improve attendance because one of the issues that came out of uh, the seniors that were at risk was that a sizable majority, I believe over half, had more than 15 days absent from school. So that's a priority for the Chris and his staff uh, to come up with ways to try to address that. 
Also, uh, we will be talking about a, the scheduling committee, which will be getting underway uh, this fall at the high school to look at the high school schedule and also uh, making some recommendation, as I mentioned before, about how do we address those students with social emotional needs that we know about. And, and I know we've been talking about the high school, but it's really a district issue, a K-12 issue, just not a 9-12 issue. Uh, regional special ed uh, last month uh, several of the me uh, committee members went to the annual awards night uh, which again was held in the high school auditorium uh, a number of our teachers and students were recognized for their their work with our special needs population the operations audit uh, has been completed we're expecting the first draft uh, by mid-july and again as soon as I get a draft I will share it with the committee um, and let's see and the Newport Area Career and Tech Center we were supposed to have met on June 7th but that meeting got postponed uh, so the last meeting that we held was on May 17th uh, the Board of Directors which is comprised of the superintendents from the uh, from Newport and the sending districts uh, received its 1718 Perkins grant allocation uh, the grant was for 204,525 which is 10,516 less than this year's allocation Right also reduced the amount which districts can spend on their school to career coordinators positions by $13,774. And that's for the whole region. They cut it by 30% because Ride said only 30% of your allocation or only a certain percentage of your dollars can go towards school to career position to pay for them. The rest has to go for programming. So our uh, school to career coordinators salary, because we pay for the salary out of the uh, out of that Perkins grant uh, is reduced from 23,031 to 18,801 for next year. Is there any particular rationale for that? Um, my uh, ride, I believe it's that they want, and I, I can find out more, but I believe it's that ride wants more of that funding to go towards programming and not people per se. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, right now the person in the position works 12 hours a week I would assume that we would continue to work that works schedule would still hold in place if the committee w wants to add more money uh, to make up the difference that would have to be an agenda item for a, another meeting and the committee would have to address that we know that they told us those are the numbers that they gave us we haven't finalized the budget because we were supposed to have done that on June 7th we haven't had a final uh, a meeting to finalize the numbers but these were the numbers that they gave us at the May 17th meeting Mrs. Larson the uh, are. <laughs> within Perkins the allocation for school-based coordinators can't be more than 30 percent as Mr. Rarick indicated there was always um, within the region it was much greater than that many years so they're cutting that back to meet the Perkins requirement per rides recommendation which which um, we knew was coming so that presented the 18 percent reduction in the school-based coordinator um, but yeah I, I was informed that the hours would remain the same for the 17-18 school year with an 18 percent reduction but that was a 30 percent you know um, threshold or, or ceiling for school-based coordinators they only want a certain percentage of Perkins to be spent on overhead right, right and the intent is for the remainder of the <coughs> money to go towards um towards programs so and in your backup just looking quickly and i don't know if there was a typo our request for 1718 for perkins is 28,835, um and i think it said 23 so um so that program money we're still kind of waiting to hear we'll get something a little bit less um but that's where the 30 percent number came from okay all right Once we know the numbers, yeah. We were 
based on our the early uh, numbers that we were being told, we thought we were going to get a significant uh, reduction, more so than just ten thousand dollars from the Perkins uh, total grant. And every year, um, the things that we're requesting for is to support our PLTW program primarily here at the high school. But what happens is you have the other districts at the table also asking for money for their programs. Sure. Because we were the first ones in the shoot to get funding, uh, we're confident that we'll get most, if not all, of our requests. Um, next year, however, they will, you know, because we're done with our PLTW uh, initial three-year window, um, that those funds may decrease, although we may be eligible or we are going to be eligible for categorical funding. Uh, because, as I mentioned before, we've been approved as an engineering uh, right. school. Okay. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. That that could possibly at risk from Washington because that's all federal dollars. It's about seven hundred and fifty thousand. So, any sense of a timeline of when we're going to know all the bad news and no more bad news will be coming? I think this is pretty much the the real bad news could be if we if we didn't get yeah. the if we didn't get the allocation for the PLTW equipment. I mean, we don't have it, but yeah. I mean that would be bad news. I mean, it's bad news that the position got cut, but that's ride making that. You know, again, as Mrs. Larson said, we've been spending over the 30% threshold for a number of years right. uh, for that position. At one point, uh, back when there was much more federal aid available, uh, it was 100%, and it was a lot more than just the small amount that you see there. Um, to the question of the other funds, I've been working on the um, consolidated resource plan, which is where most of those funds are. Um, Ride has also well, there, there have not been cuts because, of course, the allocations were funded under the previous federal administration um, budget. Um, RIDE has withheld more funds for new initiatives. Um, so there's wonderful things happening at the state level, such as a leadership forum for principals that all of our principals will be going to next week. But that was, um, that was a hold back from funds that used to go to each district. So it depends on where you're asking about the allocation. Federally, um, there wasn't a change, but the state has divvied up the pot differently. Um, and so um, with the new ESSA um, mm -hmm. Education Success Act. Act, every student yes. succeeds Act. Pardon me, I need coffee. <laughs> our, our training started real early this morning. Um, po apologize. With that, um, you know, there's some regulations and assurances changes too. So um, I would think we could have an update for the committee um, at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, number two, assistant superintendent's report. I wrote a long report. Without since coffee. This is the first one. You've received from me, um, but I'd be happy to entertain any questions. What I wanted to focus on today, because it um, is so um, exciting, is just a brief overview of the, and it's it's touched under each of the areas I provide in my report, the elementary science. Um, so since 2011, Tiverton teachers have been participating in training around uh, science standards and the changes that go into full effect this year. 15-16 um, was a planning year, and. Um, each year we've been more and more aligned to the next generation science standards. Um, back in November of 2015, we convened, as you know, a vertical science team to look at various resources. And that group um, ranged in teachers and administrators from grades K to 8 with the goal of finding materials and programs that were the most aligned to the next generation science standards. Um, the team selected um, of the various things we vetted and piloted, the team selected two school, two programs, STEM Scopes, which is an online support that we have at the middle school, and Amplify uh, for elementary. So this year, um, we um, implemented Amplify Physical Science, and the teachers received training. Um, our, that's in all the grades, K to four, um, and we're hoping um, 
over the course of next year, which is um, continues our transition to implement the life and um, earth science units for those programs. Because of the support of the Van Buren Foundation, our teachers have had great training in engineering at grades three and four and developed uh, recommendations for other teachers that will be shared state and regionally wide. Um, at this time, just today, um, we started bright and early um, at Ranger School with uh, nine days of training for our elementary teachers. And they are, um, the, well, you may think it's summer, um, they're working hard. And uh, we have over 90% of the teachers participating with presenters from UC Berkeley, Salve Regina, and Rhode Island College. And they are really working hard. So um, it's, it's very exciting. And the entire nine-day series was planned with input from NEA leadership and our elementary principals, um, and it's, it's really wonderful. So um, our goal is to ensure that they have everything that they need to teach the most aligned um, next generation science standards, which are standards, but they are integrated with reading and writing. They're very um, inquiry-driven and really um, right where we need to be. So we are doing this with the support of the Department of Ed and our partners, and it's really all about being at the forefront, and our teachers are really doing an amazing job. So I just want to publicly thank them for um, being right there and doing um, very rigorous learning uh, the day after school ended. And uh, it's exciting. So please come on over and see it if you'd like to. We're there until June 30th. Could you help me with something? I see in your report you make mention of a term I'm not familiar with, FUSE? Yes, my pleasure. So um, Mr. Ashley and Dr. Dias Mitchell and I will be meeting later this week um, to um, flesh out FUSE. And if I may, I'd like to defer to Mr. Ashley since he is uh, the most well-informed on the topic. Do you mind just sharing a little <laughs> bit about FUSE? OK. Uh, sure. uh, Thank you, Mr. Ashley. Hear me. Um, thank you. Uh, so Fuse is a. Um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of it. I guess I think technically it's a nonprofit. Um, yes. It originally stemmed out of the Highlander Institute, which is a charter organization, and now they have totally separated. Um, and real, uh, they've developed through a grant, through a variety of grants, um, a kind of. Uh, teacher coaching model where they ask districts and most districts in the state now are involved where um, teachers in K to 12 um, can apply to become what's called a FUSE fellow um, and through an application process um, if they get involved basically FUSE trains that teacher to be a coach to another teacher that a district has identified as really kind of open to receiving another teacher into his or her classroom in a non-evaluative sense so this is no administrators involved this is really peer-to-peer -peer contact to establish a relationship and talk about um, teaching and learning and the role that technology can play in that uh, and so uh, we've had an initial conversation with fuse just to kind of hear what what would it involve in terms of Tiverton's um, commitment to the program and so now we have our next meeting settled with Ms. Dias Mitchell and uh, Amy Donnelly Roach to talk about uh, what next steps would be to apply as a Tiverton School District to be possibly a member of this FUSE program so that um, potentially uh, we could welcome in what's called these FUSE fellows into uh, the middle or high schools to or potentially elementary schools and see um, if, if again if this is all if teachers would be open to it um, receiving some some coaching thank you yes that initial conversation that we had did involve our NEA leadership and um, the three of us as administrators um, as well as some other interested parties so um, we're excited to just explore it more and we'll get back to you with a full report Three main instructors report. Wendy's. Mike. You're up.
How is everybody tonight? Good. Okay. How are you? <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, two things I've been working on. Well, the whole crew has been working on. Uh, the high school main office here was leaking. A, it was a drain pipe from the roof. Flooded the main office. Flooded the principal's <laughs> office. It was an emergency repair. Climb up in a seal and then all that fun stuff. Uh, we ended up temporarily fixing it for the snow rainstorm. A couple of days later, we went and replaced all the pipe. The only way to fix it. Um, the day after that happened, the cooler at the middle school froze up and that had to be thought out. That was a whole day project. Had to call an independent contractor in to redo the uh, Freon inside the machine to make sure there were no leaks. There was, happened to be two leaks in the system they had to repair. That has now been taken care of. Um, as the bid went out tonight, I showed four contractors throughout the system the, uh, what's what we wanted, how we wanted to do it, and only one ended up bidding. So that's the theater here and there. Um, We've been, I've been attending night meetings with the building committee. Uh, the replaced the new water cooler here at the high school. I don't know if any of you noticed. Mr. Ashley was very happy when it was finished because it was a donation from the, the graduating class. Uh, they can fill their water they containers. They can fill their water bottles themselves to save a little water, save bottles of water. Um, and we've got to regret working for graduation with all that other stuff happening. Uh, we had to build a stage for the graduation, covered it over, made, made it all pretty, as you've all seen. Um, and we've been trying to keep up with uh, the work orders that we come in, uh, even though we're down to two full-time guys between, because of illnesses. I've been moving guys around as of... Uh, June 16th, I had five guys out that night. I had to move people around and do a little razzle and dazzle to get it done. But we got the building fair cleaned, not perfect, but we did our best with it. Uh, also, a middle a water pipe at the middle school let go. Shortly after all this is going on, it was inside the wall. We had to cut the hole, put a hole in the wall, fix the pipe make an access panel, put it all back together, all but fun. <laughs> That's just a few items that we've been working on over the past month and a uh, half, two months. And I guess that's all I have for you. Any questions? Okay. Yeah. No. The, uh, Mr. Rerick, Mr. Ashley, see me up on the roof up on the ceiling it's like where are you mike <laughs> true thank you very much thank you takes a village okay number four may financial report Mr. yes Farring. thank you i had a couple of uh, items before i got to that uh you had indicated uh dr Locken earlier you, you had questioned the federal grant allocation for 18. normally rides processes they'll give you an initial estimate of about 5% less than the prior year, but we won't know until months from now what the final allocation is. But just mm -hmm. as a point of reference, our final number for the current fiscal year for 17 was 783,000, and they gave us 750,000. Which So it's within the parameters of prior years. So it really wasn't a, a red flag yet that there's going to be significant cuts. Okay. Um, Items that we've been working on in the financial team, um, we've, we put together the custodial bids each year for the East Bay uh, communities, and once again, we, we did that, and the bids have gone out to the communities. Um, we each take our turn. In the fall, we do the oil bids. Uh, I just wanted to give uh, Carolyn credit in my office. That went off without a hitch again. Um, we also... Um, on a less successful note, went out to bid for the curtains for the high school and did not have any bidders. So we're contemplating what our next step would be. We had a, a quote from one um, interested party, and we're going to uh, see if that's uh, a viable option or we need to go out to bid in, in its entirety. Uh, that's kind of an infrequent occurrence for us, but it's such a specialty item, it really didn't surprise me. Um, I, I gave you a hard copy of the May financials that I had previously uh, sent you via email. Uh, um, there's really... 
there's really nothing to be alarmed about. I think for the, for the first time in a couple of years, we're going to be very close to budget. Um, the, the big story is we had about $200,000 in uh, unbudgeted out of district special ed expenses. The culmination of all of the other accounts pretty much offset that this year. There, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of pluses and minuses, but overall the favorability in, in some of our major accounts like uh, heating oil, for example, came in favorable because we had a relatively mild winter despite deliveries continuing into May, which is pretty unusual. The positive news offset the negative news from that out of district spend account, so I don't anticipate finishing the year with a significant variance plus or minus. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions, but we're pretty much on track and I'm pretty satisfied with how the year's gone so far financially. Any questions, Deb? No? Will, will we know, will we have something like this in hand for our meeting in July? Typically what I do is the, we have the, the soft close in June, which is a culmination of all the actual expenses, which I hand out. But then between June and when the auditors come in, we have our closing entries and accruals and that type of stuff. So the answer is yes, you'll have an indication of where we, where we are. And I usually share that with the committee where I think we're going with the accruals. So you, you'll, you'll have some very current information. So maybe once we have that hand, we can set that budget Yes. So what line item is this? Sped variance? The sped, uh, let's see, the, the, the out of district account uh, is. I can't even find it. We have. It's sped to private sources, 56630. So we have about a half million left in our budget there and I just checked today we track those numbers internally and that's pretty much the Bottom outstanding the bills page. that we have 56 or 55 55 630 oh, 55 630 oh. okay there it is uh, okay now I see it so you'll see there's 523,000 a balance in that account I'm sorry the 421 the column to the right yeah and w there there's a uh, there's roughly that amount left in our in a, w when we went through our accruals this week to see the outstanding bills primarily for June that we haven't received yet. And you're expecting it to be two hundred thousand dollars in the red. Correct. No. Yes, that's correct. In the red or in the black? Because right now it's only at fifty-five percent. Am I reading that wrong? That is. No, you're reading it right. That's the balance of the original budget of nine forty-four. Right. So the, are all the bills coming in June then? Yes. Okay. And typically there's a lag. We still don't even. Yeah. The, yeah. Those. That's a little more predictable because the from month to month the transportation bill doesn't vary, but there is maybe a four to six week lag. Why do they do that? I don't pay them until the month is complete. We, they bill us early. The issue isn't on the vendor side. <laughs> <laughs> they give him 30 days, he takes it. <laughs> they get sent out in time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, Mr. Fiori, yes. They hired Sahadi again um, um, at the uh, town council. Was that a recent meeting? Because my, my understanding was that they wanted to roll the contract, and then uh, I don't think they were allowed to, so they probably went out to bid again. But I, that, that's. They had a competing bid, but they chose to stay. Okay. But I, I did mention to the treasurer after that I wasn't happy with the comment he made when he gave out the report that we had such a large surplus and the town didn't. I think he should have said he was concerned about the town having so little. Yeah, I'm, I've had that Absolutely. discussion with them, and I'll reiterate it when they come back. Of course, a lot of problems. I didn't view that as a reflection on us as much as the municipal side because I'm comfortable where we are as far as our our financial situation absolutely no, thank you thank you for that mrs black okay anyone else all right item 9h request approval to submit application for a van buren grant thank you yes um I'd like your approval to submit a request in partnership with the Newport County Regional Special Education and the Tiverton Prevention Coalition um, for a uh, proposal that would include a three-year opportunity for our teachers to be um, trained and work on um, 
extending the high school core values, our standards for digital literacy, and our standards for social emotional um, support and in an integrated manner into um, our high school with, again, significant training and facilitation. So. Any discussion? Yes, just before I came, I was reading in education weekly about the uh, social emotional, and we all know how important that is. We talk about educating the whole child, and I think this is a fabulous opportunity. I hope that we can do it. And I'm glad Rebecca's in on it. She's fabulous also. <laughs> And, and Linda Lawson had lunch with the Van Burens today, so maybe we could get more. The Van Burens? Yes. Oh, no. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Item 9, uh, 9I, State Five Year Forecast and Adopted Budget Survey. Yes, thank you. Um, each year when the uh, municipal budget's adopted by the town, we're required to report to the state that budget result in a corresponding five-year plan to the uh, D Office of Municipal Affairs. So that's what this document is. The first one is just a reflection of the budget that uh, we, were, we were voted at the uh, financial town referendum. And then starting with the fiscal year 18 year and going out four more years, I've, I've done a five-year projection based on some estimates that I've uh, put in my memo. Basically, the, um, the, the crux of them, because we're so driven by salary and, and benefits, is I put in a 2%, a uh, I'm sorry, 2.5% um, estimate for our salary, which is sort of where we've been running historically. And that, that's about average when you consider our step increase and, and the annual salary adjustment. And I used... Um, 2.5% uh, for pensions as well, and I believe I used 3% 3, 3 for the um, health insurance increase. And basically, once we put all that together, um, the corresponding revenue assumption I used was 2%, which would be a total of, of local and state increase. Uh, it, it pretty much balanced, so I, I was satisfied with the result of the five-year plan. In past years, sometimes we've gone right to the cap on revenue. I didn't think that was probably a prudent decision based on what we've seen locally. So I, I'm submitting this uh, to the committee for your approval. Uh, and if you uh, go ahead with that, I will combine it with the treasurer's information, and then she will submit to um, the municipal affairs. And, uh, Louise, yes. This has come up before, but what are they doing with it? I think <laughs> it's used as a, uh, a monitoring. It, 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 it <laughs> It, they, they monitor municipalities and or school departments that they believe are in trouble. So, uh, so if you request a budget of like a 12% increase, they're going to go, hmm. I think, I think there, it's a combination of things. If, if, you're, if you show projected expenses that are, you know, vastly past where a reasonable revenue estimate would be, they'll probably call you in to ask you what's going on. But I don't think there's a lot of analysis of the out years. I think they are concentrating on the year that you have a budget for the current year. Okay. Do you need a motion for us to approve that? Yeah, I've, I've told the treasurer that I wanted to hold off on the five-year portion. Is that we know what the budget, is, the, the current year budget is, because it's been voted. But yes, if the committee could approve the five-year, I'll, I'll let the treasurer know. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. And item nine J. Yes. Year also, me. Uh, thank you. Um, with the budget process, we had submitted a capital um, request for one-time items, and that's pretty much what you see before you with two exceptions. We had um, moved on one item earlier with the committee's um, permission to, uh, the, we, had a, we had a great deal on a server that we wanted to uh, have in, on hand so we could get started on that this summer. Uh, so we, we purchased that in fiscal year 17 rather than 18, so we removed that from the plan. Second item is Amplify Science Kits, which um, we've started implementing in the current year and this is years two and three we've sort of accelerated from our original plan and i we put that in here and uh, our assistant superintendent can provide a lot more detail on what that is but basically it's replacing the science kits that we previously had purchased from ebec we're going in a slightly different direction and we have a year of success under under our belt that that uh, was just talked about. So I'll be happy to answer any other questions. The other, the other items you've seen before, those were the only two items that, that differed from our original presentation six months ago. So I, I do have a couple of questions, mm -hmm. and I will ask Ms. Donnelly Roach a little bit more detail about the $70,000 for mm -hmm. science kits, because I don't know what that is. Sure. But uh, I'm thinking, you know, as I, as I look at these capital expenditures and, and particularly around technology, because that's been really the single biggest capital mm -hmm. expenditure over the last few years. 
I'm wondering if there's a way that we can kind of put it into perspective as we make these requests to to make purchases, you know, to say, okay, well, last year we spent, and I'm throwing these numbers out hypothetically, you know, last year we spent 200000 uh, the year before we spent 125000 and this year we're asking for 100000 uh, and of that, uh, 40000 is replacement equipment, 20000 is software that is a, a rollover, let's say. Uh, it, just a little bit more than a, a, a running list. Yeah, of it's, it's a little, I understand. I think the nature of your question is when you look at a snapshot like this, you really don't, you're not able to put it into perspective. So what I, I have this for each year that we've, you know, doing this pro. Yeah, so what I can do is I can sort of make you know, a comp compilation of multiple years. Sure. buildings, equipment, yeah. you know, make it so that it actually... Capital fund, or okay. capital expenditures. Capital expenditures yeah, of all kinds so that we understand <laughs> where the money's where going. going. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I think that would be... Exactly. I mean, we know what each individual item... Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, and that would be a useful exercise to kind of... De I mean, we, we've circulated those numbers because we like to demonstrate that our one-time capital has come out of our fund balance. So, yeah, I, we can certainly summarize it in that manner. Okay. We've got close to that from... Yeah, I think three years is sufficient. I'm not like interested in we 20. Do, we're doing the budget. Correct. Yeah, it's just, it, it's probably yeah. next uh, another level of detail yeah. than we may yeah. have provided. Yeah. And then I guess my second question is, okay, tell us about a science kit or kits. Sure, so, um, I'm, my pleasure. Um, for the last few decades, we've been using kits that are purchased um, by the East Bay Collaborative, and then we rent them um, from them. Uh, our drivers go pick them up and deliver them to our uh, teachers, and each grade level has, um, depending on the grade level, one to three kits historically in the past. Um, as I mentioned earlier, our vertical science team um, looked at those resources available along with many other um, <coughs> material options, and um, the team of teachers recommend going with, rather than a rebooted um, next generation tool, a new tool that was written to the standards um, from the ground up. Um, so when I look a, at... So oh. when you say a kit, yes, I, I'm going to ask a very concrete question. Do you mean like a Bunsen burner or do you yep. mean it's a basically software or... Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. so it's a kit like... It's yes. a it's Mom a pick kit. up the kit, yes. open it, Chemistry and everything you need to like teach that. a unit is All there. Right. Okay. Um, right. The newer kits, um, the <laughs> kits we've um, from Amplify also include additional resources um, that connect to other content areas. So they in kit include um, books as well. Um, historically, the district has spent um, annually about fifteen thousand dollars to rent kits, and um, these these. Uh, kits that we're proposing to purchase would not be rented, obviously, and would be um, kept in the teacher's classroom or in the storage room, and therefore can be integrated more easily into our curriculum. Rather than receiving a kit and having to teach it within a certain window, um, we can really be more thoughtful and strategic about integrating things across kits. What grades would these cover? Kindergarten through grade four. Okay. So um, this would unify things so that each classroom has at least three science units, um, comes with additional materials that are available online, um, and can be integrated across the curriculum. Um, there are some consumables in the kits, um, that, but certainly not um, thousands of dollars of materials, no. No, yeah, no. Okay, thank you. All right, so uh, I think we're up to 9K, permission to generate grant proposals, middle school? Yes, uh, there's a, a request uh, that I'm recommending approval uh, for the middle school to seek two grants, one in the uh, amount of $4,500 uh, to benefit the ELA program to purchase 20 Chromebooks and a cart. And the second grant proposal would be for a legislative grant of three in the amount of three thousand dollars to uh, support the middle school athletic program. Do you have a motion to approve? That motion, second. Are these five through seven? Thank you. Is this five through yes. Okay. Any other discussion? Questions? All those in favor? Thank you for doing that. 
opposed? Yes, thank you for doing that. I entertain a motion to continue number 9 L. L. Spotlight on success. July 11th. We, July 11th. we hope to have the team here for them. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Number 10, announcements. No. None? Um, I'd like to, I know Bill already mentioned it, but I would like to thank um, our administrators and our staff. They did a great job with the graduations, high school, eighth grade. Um, I wasn't at the elementary ones, but I um, have heard they were really well done. I know that takes a lot of work, um, and, and it's very much appreciated by um, us and, and obviously our parents. Can I make yeah. one? Yeah, sure. uh, this Thursday night is the last athletic awards uh, for the high school um, where spring athletes uh, are receiving their pins and letters and all athletes for the year uh, who qualify for athletic jackets will receive them and the boosters are also giving out their scholarship awards. 6.30 in the auditorium here. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Anything else? I would like to suggest that we um, um, recommend that the committee look at uh, revising our policy on acceptable use of a technology just in light of the many changes in um, security and privacy laws around student information online. We can um, put it on the agenda for our next policy meeting. Thank you. Can you just draft that policy? Yes, but it changes. What, the internet changes? <laughs> Hard to believe. Provide a recommendation for the red line. I know. Uh, uh, anything else? Okay. Can I have a motion? Okay, Mrs. Black. Yep, yep. Mrs. Black, you're the vice chair. Come on. I'd like to make a motion to move into executive session under RIGL 42465 A1. Discussion of job performance, character, physical, or mental health, superintendent evaluation and contract, RIGL 42465A2, legal advice and litigation, potential litigation, RIGL 42465A1, discussion of job performance, character, or physical, or mental health, staff complaint. Roll call vote. Hmm? Roll call vote. Roll call vote. Yeah, after oral. Yeah. 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 Y